Thanks, everybody, for being here. It's a pleasure to share our story with you. CENTIAR is world's first holographic ablation guidance system. Uh, I'll tell you more about what it means as we go through the, to, uh, the slide deck. Our objective is to improve safety, increase accuracy, and efficiency initially in the cardiac ablation procedures, but we'll talk more about where else it can apply. Cardiac ablations are the only possible treatment solution for cardiac arrhythmias. And what I'm gonna walk you through very briefly is Bill Schmidt's story where he was with his family in France, seemingly a lovely day, and he didn't end up being one of the 15 million people who die. Instead, he fell down after a syncope due to an arrhythmia. He had a, a tachycardia. He busted up his face, soon to find out, in fact, he was one of the 40 million people that lives with a cardiac arrhythmia. Now, 40 million people. There's an enormous amount of people living with an arrhythmia today. We do about 100 procedures every hour, cardiac ablation procedures. And these procedures are done in a very complicated room. There's multiple technologies in the room. You're looking at electrical and anatomical mapping. You're looking at a pacing system. You're looking at an ablation system. And these are all disparate systems. The physician, the EP, the electrophysiologist who's performing the procedure on someone like Bill is having to look at all this information in real time. There's no context provided. And it's all disparate, so it's on separate monitors. It's a very archaic way to solve the problem, obviously, and that's what we've done so far. What else are they doing? They're also quarterbacking the procedures. Everybody relies on the electrophysiologist's verbal commands to, to guide the procedure today. And the problems. Visualization is a problem. 3D information is presented on 2D monitors. There's zero control. Physician has no control of the digital tools that are available to them. Connectivity, none of the systems are connected. And there is zero decision support. All the information is streaming in real time. Why should we care? We, we do about a million procedures today. Actually, it's more than that. And it's projected to be a million and a half by 2025. And the average procedure success rate at one year is 60%. What is that leading to? Four and a half billion dollars of spending that we do on excess procedures. By the time I'm done here, we're going to have several people who have gotten an unsuccessful ablation. What is CENTIAR's vision? We're looking to create a system where advanced visualization is provided, unprecedented control through voice guidance as well as gestures, and decision support is provided to the physician via contextual information. Now, this image you're looking at isn't something we cooked up. An author from, uh, for Jack um, articles or um, um, cardiovascular interventions volume have called us up and said, look, we love to represent what you guys are doing. And this, was, this image particularly was developed by them, actually. Now, I'm going to show you a quick video of what we have done so far. It's here today. It's not some futuristic vision. We've done this, it's been the clinical use. You're gonna be looking at the first holographic guidance system, a wearable command center, where the physician wears a headset during a procedure. This is a completely hands-free interface, once again, world's first, where a physician can manipulate the interface and place it in their environment wherever they want. Con contrast that to what you have to do with monitors. They can look around it like a true 3D object. It's a 3D hard anatomy. You can look around it like a 3D object. You can clip inside the heart during the procedure. Unprecedented, you can't do that today. You can share where multiple people can look at the same heart model that physician is looking at. And those noodly things that you're seeing there, those are actual catheters. This is a static model for the demonstration, but those actually update in real time in a procedure. This is our patented interface where the physician can manipulate the image, once again, hands-free by gazing over different aspects of the model, rotating it. They can select preset views, and you can zoom all the way in and literally go inside the heart. I have a demonstration with me today if you'd like to see it later on. The team behind the technology comes up through some of the top institutions 
several exits, including Cardio Insight, as well as um, Alive Core, who is actually not an exit necessarily, but a successful company. Um, and the core of our technology is a user, electrophysiologist, Dr. Jennifer Silva, right in the middle, the, the shortest one of, of, of us all, and probably the biggest brain. <laughs> um, and we are now 10 people, so we are primarily a software company. The headset you've seen is a Microsoft HoloLens. Here's our clinical progress so far. As I told you a minute ago, this is in use today, was used. It's not cleared yet. We've submitted for FDA clearance in October. We expect to get clearance here in the next quarter. 16 patients completed the study, and we've measured 50% improvement in accuracy. So that means four and a half millimeters of error with the standard of care on average, and that dropped to about two and a half. The standard deviation dropped from four millimeters to about 1.8. The usability questions, 100% positive response, including physicians telling us they learned something new about the anatomy. I don't want to scare you all, but they're learning something new about the anatomy. And today, they're doing it on the standard of care, what's available to them. The workflow assessments, we've measured their interactions with their environment. Can we reduce that workload? And what we've seen is it dropped from two interactions per navigation point to 0.17. Here are some of the testimonials from the users. I understood the anatomy of the right atrium better. I feel like my speed and accuracy is better. We didn't test speed in this case. We've only tested their ability to get to points in a given time. It was a time-bound study. That's the next set of clinical work we're looking to do. One of the physicians thought they used less fluoro. We haven't measured that. We fully expect that to be a part of the equation. When we asked them, could you use it for every procedure? And what they told us is, is I understand anatomy better. It's better for the patients. It's better accuracy for the pathways we're trying to treat. What does this mean? What's the benefits of this? We anticipate 25% reduction in repeat ablations at one year. We anticipate reduction in procedure time as well as personnel reduction. Therefore, providing a benefit to all stakeholders in the chain. Payers save money, providers not only get revenue increase, but get a clear, hard ROI per install per cath lab. Currently, we're looking at about 10,000 cath labs. It's supposed to be 11,500 by 2025. This is a massive procedure done in large volumes. You're, the total addressable market for this is almost $3 billion. If you focus only on the complex ablations, the, the labs that do complex ablations, maybe half of that. And our plans right now to reach at 100 million by 2025 and explode from there. Here's our go to market. We have a tree, tiered pricing model where not only we have an ablation guidance system, we're also developing a training and education system. We started a little differently. A lot of companies who focus on AR or VR, starting with training, we started with intraprocedural use, which we believe gives us a very unique edge since we are in the procedure in front of real cases used by real physicians. Then move that into a training scenario where we can get the fellows, the, the training, the, the attending physicians or attendees um, very early. Our competition today in the electrophysiology space is basically the panel displays, the monitors that we invented a long, long time ago. Outside of EP, we have some competition uh, in, from a few players in the field. But when you look at hands-free control, we are the only player today, and we patent that technology, what we call gaze and dwell. We are currently raising, we call a Series A, our first valued offering. Up until now, we've gotten $2.8 million in non-dilutive financing, plus 2.2 .2 in dilutive uh, convertibles or safes. Now we're raising a three, the three, three and a half million dollars round. We have a lead investor. The terms are set, 7.4 million pre-money. It's a preferred Series A offering, and we can talk more about the details on that. We look to establish some validation and develop our second generation with additional integrations. 
Here's our clinical programs. And uh, I'm running out of time, so I will stop here. But as you can see, world's top institutions are signed up to work with us as our next set of sites. These are not um, small centers, community centers, or our friends. These are actual physicians who are doing cases, who are studying these things from institutions like Stanford, Mayo Clinic, Mass General, as well as Washington University, where we're from. I would love to talk with you more. I clicked an extra point there. But um, my name is Burke Toss, and uh, I'm here the rest of the next couple of days. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.